For having zero usage competitively, Alolan Executor is a beast. But he's a grass dragon for some reason, with pretty mediocre stats. But hey, 125 special attack. However, we can use its harvest ability to make this thing nuts. We use Substitute to try to get to low HP to activate a Pattaya Berry, which boosts our special attack by one stage. And Harvest in the Sun allows us to restore the berry at the end of each turn, continually boosting up as long as the sun is up. We can then use Trick Room to reverse the speed and allow Executor to be faster than almost everything. Giga Drain restores our health right back up while hitting hard, and Flamethrower is also boosted in the sun for some good coverage. If set up correctly, this long boy can be an absolute monster. So I still remember the day that they like announced Alolan Executor. I totally thought it was fake, and it turns out it is in fact very real. And what is also very real is the whooping boy will give you with that neck. Executor in general is weird, and that's what I'm into when it comes to competitive Pokemon. Now if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. Now with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Magneton that looks like he's in a band, and I have a turtle that makes it sunny. Now, this is actually pretty bad, because while I set up the sun, it's good for me, it's also kind of bad, because now, uh, this thing gets its Protosynthesis activated, and gets a free little special attack boost. What's also worse is a Earth Power is not good for the turtle, so... I gotta make some moves, and it feels like as good a time as any to bring out the palm tree. The only problem with this is that the ceilings are not high enough for my long-ass neck. So I decide to switch into the Executor here. I imagine they probably either set up Stealth Rock or go for that Earth Power. Turns out they are gonna Earth Power, and yeah, you take it no problem. Or at least, they take a little bit of damage, but honestly, the damage is kind of fine. As I decide to now go for the Substitute, they're actually going to Flash Cannon. Now what's actually amazing is I live it with 51 HP, and now my Substitute brings me down to 1 HP, which effectively brings us over to Lunchtime, which now activates my Pattaya Berry, gives me a special attack boost, I'm now behind a bean bag, and then I'm like, actually, I'm still hungry. I can harvest another Pattaya Berry and immediately eat it just in the air over here. So I think it's funny when the, <laughs> the berry is just way up where my head would be, but now I'm sitting at plus two special attack, and we are in business. So at this point, behind the substitute, obviously I'm free to take an attack here, and they're probably like, yeah, I mean, I'm still faster, so they can get rid of the substitute, which is exactly according to plan, and now allows me to go ahead and set up the trick room. So the room is tricked as hell, and Executor has never been more ready. The good part about staying in low HP is that actually I can harvest another Pattaya Berry and then just immediately eat it, which is... Absolutely amazing, and at this point, Old Ass Magneton now has a vacancy sign on its ass, and Executor's neck is looking for a room. I can then <laughs> just outspeed here, and a Giga Drain is perfect, not only being super effective, but it's also going to give me some health back, and as long as this Trick Room is alive, Executor is looking pretty nice. So I do outspeed, Giga Drain absolutely obliterates the guy, and unfortunately I do get out of range to activate my berry, which is mostly fine, because I'm just able to knock the fella out. And Executor is out here working the farms like a madman because we do harvest another Pattaya Berry for the next time we are in Berry Pinch range. So, now they can switch into wherever they like. They decide to go into the, again, an old friggin' Amoongus. And Protosynthesis is going to activate, gives an attack boost. And the main thing we're worried about here is a Sucker Punch. Obviously, with priority, kind of ruins my Trick Room shenanigans. However, I'm just going to go for the Substitute. Now, it seems like an obvious play. But if I'm them, a Sucker Punch probably is the safest, and that's exactly what they do. As, uh, Executor is like, nope, I am going to just chill over here, get another Substitute, which activates another Pattaya Berry. And you can kind of see how this strategy gets a little bit out of hand here. So now I'm behind a free Substitute, which is actually amazing. We harvest another Pattaya Berry and then immediately eat it. Again, floating in the damn air, but at this point... The Pattayas are plentiful. The, the Bountiful Harvest is basically providing all the special attack we would ever freaking need. And now we're at plus five with some Sun and some Trick Room. And I also have the coverage with the Flamethrower. Because for whatever reason, Alolan Executor is a dragon. And I guess that's why he can Flamethrower. He's a freaking tree. But regardless, I now get Sucker Punched, which I'm kind of forced to attack at this point, which is fine. That's why the sub is there as a nice little, little layer of protection. And a flamethrower is absolutely going to saute this little fella. And it actually goes pretty well with the nice little pattaya berry for a little, a little brunch. So, that takes care of that. Now, at this point, Executor is feeling good. I even get another pattaya berry to bring me up to plus six. 
which there could not be a better situation for the executor. So things are actually about to get interesting because as now they decide to switch into the Don Dozo and this is a very large fella who may present a problem here. So here's the thing, there's one turn of Trick Room left and as I go for a Giga Drain, it actually is able to outspeed me and that is because Don Dozo is slow as hell. And even with a minus speed nature, this thing goes first in Trick Room. So I have been absolutely bamboozled and that last turn of Trick Room actually got the best of me. So now we got some making up to do and that's gonna make things a whole lot more interesting. So I decide we must rebuild and I can actually go into the Slitherwing here. I do get the benefit of that Protosynthesis attack boost. And as I'm looking at Don Dozo, I'm thinking this thing is a bit of a damn problem. But I am gonna go for the super effective Wild Charge does well over half here, as uh, I obviously take some recoil, but this thing now decides to go for the curse. And uh, it's, it tells me a little bit about what this fella is working with. And I'm like, please, sir, no sushi for me today. So now gets plus one attack and defense. Not only that, but also the effect of my protosynthesis goes away. And this thing eats some leftovers. I'm looking at Slitherwing thinking this thing probably has a lot of utili utility for me later on. So. I decided it's kind of in my best interest to switch out here. I imagine if it's a curse set, its main mode of attacking is probably gonna be body press, but I'm just gonna go into the Torkoal here. I wanna get up the sun, and also I know that Torkoal can take attacks from this thing pretty much all day long, and I kinda hope that this thing is not gonna be like a rest set. If it's leftovers, it might not be, but as they go for the body press, I'm turtle's thick, so I'm able to take that pretty nicely. And here's the idea. I can go for some Lava Plumes and roll for a Burn Chance, which does actually reduce damage from Body Press size. I go for the Lava Plume. It's not going to do a whole lot of damage. Um, and it actually shows me it does have the coverage with the Earthquake, which I am at least able to live because once again, the turtle is freaking clutch. And I really would like to get a Burn here. I'm honestly feeling like this thing probably does not have Rest, and it's kind of the main thing I'm working with here. So I just throw some more Lava at him, do in fact not get the burn, but what I do in the process is at least get enough chip to the point where I'm like, okay, I can definitely take care of this thing now. And as Torkoal does go down, that is going to get rid of my reliable sun setup. So looking at what I have left, I'm kind of feeling like with the sun, I should probably try to make some use of it. And this sharp fella is kind of the guy for the job. I'm going to go into the Leveny here. And uh, obviously with chlorophyll, I'm about fast as hell. I can now go for a leaf blade at plus one defense. I should at least be able to take care of it, but they're gonna go ahead and switch the Don Dozo out, and in comes another damn problem. So as we started off the match with the Lowland Executor looking extremely nice, now we have some pretty big roadblocks to get through, and uh, freaking Grimmsnarl is a massive one, because as I go for the Leaf Blade, doesn't do a whole lot of damage, and for the most part, Grimmsnarl is gonna be here to set up screens. It does actually show me it's working with a Fake Out, which is mostly annoying because that is going to waste a turn of the sun and now they can go for the reflect however i decide i can actually just go for a sword dance try to help myself offensively at least a little bit and i also feel like grimmsnarl cannot really hurt the levity that much so uh, the sword dance there is nice i do have two turns of the sunlight so the sunlight is burning away at this point and i'm just going to go for a leaf blade here as i imagine hey there's a crit chance and slice them up a bit so they actually end up going for the parting shot which is Gonna drop me down to plus one attack. And that is why all my homies hate Grimmsnarl. Guy just comes in and says, oh, you thought you were gonna have some offense? Yeah, I doubt it. And they actually now end up switching into the Roaring Moon. So Roaring Moon does also get the Protosynthesis, it is gonna boost the attack. And it also comes in on a Leaf Blade, which obviously doesn't do anything without a crit, especially behind the Reflect. And I'm like, this is actually fine because with one more turn of sun, I can go for the Triple Axel which is amazing because with three hits, it actually knocks out the Roaring Moon. So that was extremely clutch. That is a very large threat out of the way. And we basically got the most value out of that last turn of Chlorophyll Sun to be able to make that happen. So Roaring Moon dead. The indoor sunlight is now gone. Someone closed up the damn skylight over there. And now they can bring in the revenge switch of the Galarian Articuno. First of all, shiny Galarian Articuno having the original colors is dope as hell. But second of all, this thing is pretty damn scary, as they are going to actually go ahead and commit the Terra. Uh, they are going to be working with the Terra fighting, as much, most Galarian Articunos are. And I kind of know what these things are working with. Most of the time, they're going to be like agility with setup in Calm Mind and Stored Power. And that's exactly what this fella is going to do. They're going to go for the agility, because obviously behind the Reflect, they know that they can take at least one attack here. As at least I do get off a Triple Axle, and honestly, any chip that I can get on this thing at this point is going to be pretty crucial. So... 
The setup with the Articuno is scary. However, in the back, I'm actually not that afraid of it. And that's because I have a little bit of an insurance policy against opposing setups in the form of Ditto. So, as they end up going for the Calm Mind here, going to boost the special attack and special defense, yeah, paired with the plus two to speed. Buddy is got pretty strong stored powers at this point, and that does at least allow me to get a little bit more chip there, and uh, it's in pretty easy range. So, they end up now going for that stored power. It does obviously just obliterate the hell out of my little grass bug friend. And while this thing is quite the threat, I do have one little jelly who is literally quite fit for the job. I can go into the ditto, and at this point with the imposter, obviously I copy him, but also I take the stat boost with him. And the good thing about ditto is that with a choice scarf, you're basically always faster than the opponents. And now, this is going to allow me to go for the stored power. I do outspeed, and I'm like, hey, thanks for the Articuno, buckaroo. That does take care of it. Down goes the potential sweeper. And as I went for the stored power over just like the normal Terra Blast, I realized that with the Grimmsnarl in the back, I kind of can't really attack it. But it was in my best interest just to ensure that that Articuno just goes down because that was kind of the win condition at this point. And obviously now they're free to go into that Grimmsnarl who is dark type as hell and cannot be hit with a psychic move. So I'm thinking I, I'm just going to end up going into the Hisuian Samurai. I am dark type, so obviously this thing can't do prankster stuff to me. The problem becomes if they go for, like, the fairy coverage. However, they are just going to go for that fake out. And knowing that I'm faster, I'm going to be able to at least get some chip on this thing. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. So, they reflect does wear off. Kind of right in time for them to just go ahead and prankster up another one. But they're actually going to end up switching out here. And as the Grim Snarl is going to be saved for later, back comes the Don Dozo. He's not looking super great. Looking like a damn bozo with not as much health as before. And Aqua Cutter, obviously, is not going to do much. And uh, it's... Kind of fine. After some leftover recovery, I'm feeling like a Ceaseless Edge probably knocks this thing out. If it doesn't, I know I can likely live one body press here. And I'm just going to go ahead and start edging. I go for that Ceaseless Edge, which uh, does connect. And also, this thing lives on 3 HP because Dondozo literally never dies. I, all my homies also hate this thing, which they actually end up going for a curse here. Probably just imagining I switch out or something ridiculous, but... The curse at that point was kind of just a Hail Mary play as they're playing from behind. If they can start to set up the Dondozo somehow to live, it does give them a little bit of a chance. And after some leftovers and plus one defense, luckily the Narwhal is sharp enough here to go ahead and hopefully cut him up. And now the Dondozo becomes the freaking sushi. We're having catfish tonight and that takes care of it. And at this point, the final Pokemon is going to be the Grimmsnarl. So I was actually able to set up two layers of spikes, which is honestly kind of nice because now... Mr. Snarl does have to come in and step on some freaking Legos. So, it comes in. It is going to be around half at this point. And without a Reflect, at least, I should be able to knock it out. I am going to go for Aqua Cutter. It's kind of just my best damage here. But they are going to fake out. And Buddy is fighting to the very freaking end here. This has kind of been a whirlwind of a game. Ditto honestly saved me. Um, and as they go for a Reflect here, I am just going to go ahead and slice him and dice him. And that actually is going to knock it out with a critical hit. So... That's going to be the end of the match, and honestly, that was a really good game. Kind of an all-around team effort, and uh, I thought that was just a pretty damn fun one. So, that is going to do it for game number one, which is now, you already know, is going to bring us into game number two. So, look, if you've made it this far into the video and you haven't hit the like button yet, you should probably hit the button, because it does help out, and I appreciate it. And with that, let's go ahead and get into it. This is actually another crazy game. So, this time my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Cinderace. As you already know, I got myself a little Sunny Fire Turtle. Now, the problem whenever you see a Cinderace is like, I don't really want to set up Stealth Rock in front of this because I know there's going to be some court change nonsense, but I'm just going to set up the Stealth Rock anyway, as they obviously just go for the U-turn. They don't really have much business staying in uh, on the Torkoal, so I'm like, I'm just going to set up some rocks for now, and those are probably going to come back to bite me later. Which it is fine. So they decide to go into big old Minecraft Salty Boy and Garganacle. I'm just playing against all the most annoying nonsense today, which always ends up happening. But regardless, Garganacle is not super bad. I can end up going for an Earth Power against it for some super effective, but I don't really know what it wants to do. I imagine they probably set up Stealth Rock of their own, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go right back into the freaking palm tree and we're gonna go ahead and get the party started early once again now, i know that i can take anything this wants to throw at me i also probably end up scaring it out and as they go for the salt cure it's kind of bad as i'm looking at it i'm like okay well now i have to take continual damage for as long as i'm freaking alive 
and it couldn't be that bad because maybe it might end up knocking me down into Pattaya range and I'm like, if that's all this thing wants to do, I'm gonna be fine with it. I decide to go for the substitute here as I imagine they probably switch, which they are definitely gonna go ahead and get the hell out of here as in comes the Cinderace. So Cinderace is ready to play some damn soccer, but the Pond Tree is ready to play with some dolls. I go for the substitute and that is kind of good because obviously it takes care of some of my health, but after one more salt cure, it's looking like I am going to be in range to activate that berry. And you already know we're going to do some harvesting. And as I now go for the trick room, they actually go for the court change here, which is great because while it does put the rocks on my side, that's a price I'm willing to pay to basically get up a free trick room and a behind the substitute. And next turn with that salt cure, it's actually going to end up helping me. And I'm not super worried about the continual damage from the salt cure because I can just Giga Drain back up. And as the Cinderace did in fact turn itself into a normal type, Giga Drain is now going to be neutral. So I do activate that berry. is going to give me a nice little plus one, and we're feeling strong. And then we're like, I'm going to go ahead and hit the plow the fields real quick, harvest myself another one, throw that bitch in the air, and we are now at plus two special attack, which is exactly the situation we're looking to be. And not only do I have the substitute, but I have the trick room up. I'm also at plus two special attack, and it's hammering time. I'm going to decide to go for the Giga Drain now. And that absolutely just obliterates the fella. And uh, not only did we get some health, but uh, down goes Cinderace, which is a fast threat, and that thing is annoying. And while I do obviously get some health, I was like, yeah, it's going to take me out of range for another special attack boost. But most of the time, you really don't need that many. And the Salt Cure eventually is going to bring me on back. We do, of course, since the sun is still up, harvest ourselves another one. Keep one loaded in the damn chamber for the next time we are in berry range. So... They decide now to bring in the Breloom, and Breloom is an extendo arm fellow with some mock punches, so you already know they're going to go for that priority, and that uh, actually doesn't end up breaking the substitute, which is amazing, which now allows me to go ahead and fire off a little flamethrower in the sun, absolutely. We're just roasting mushrooms all damn day today, so that takes care of the Breloom, and that is super fun. We love the benefits of being a palm tree that can friggin' breathe fire, and as the salt cure activates, a couple more and we're going to be back in the berry range, but as long as we're behind this substitute, I'm feeling pretty nice. On the revenge switch, they can go ahead and bring in the Gyarados, who is a little bit of a problem. However, I can now just go for some nice little neutral Giga Drains. It's probably not a one-hit KO, but of course, with that Trick Room up, I am going to be faster and it just barely is able to live. Because honestly, Gyarados just does not die to things you would imagine it would, but I do get some health and that makes us feel like a strong palm tree. So they actually do have the coverage with the Ice Fang, which is annoying because we're obviously four times weak to that. So that does take care of whatever health this freaking substitute had left. But honestly, that bean bag has done its job at this point. So we do take some more Salt Cure, which gets increasingly more annoying as it stays there for the entire damn time. Uh, however, we do at least have one turn of Trick Rim left. And I'm like, well, might as well go ahead and make some use of it. I can just outspeed and go for a Giga Drain here. And there's basically nothing they can do uh, to stop the Executor. As long as, as long as the Trick Room is up, if the room is tricked, you're going to get hoed by the Palm Tree. That does take care of the Gyarados. And now it's time to see kind of what their answer is. As the Sun goes away, the Trick Room goes away. And guess what? The Salt Cure stays. I'm one salty-ass Palm Tree. Um, and as the dimensions are normal, we are in a little bit of trouble here because as they are now able to switch into Dragonite This is a fella that's gonna present kind of a unique problem here So as I don't have the stealth rock up, it does have its multi-scale available now I have a couple a couple of different options for this scenario I decide to go for the Terra Water knowing that there's a chance that they have like an ice spinner or maybe allow me to live like a Dragon Claw I'm gonna go for the Terra Water because I'm like dude. I've made it this far with the Executor we're going to get all the use we can out of here. So, they do actually end up having the Ice Spinner, which is amazing. And that allows us to live it, which is nice. However, as I go for a Giga Drain, with that multi-scale, it's going to do pretty much nothing. It does at least break the multi-scale, which is kind of the value I was looking for there. Because I feel like in the back, I can handle Dragonite as long as it's not, like, super bulky. And as the Salt Cure now activates, I was in a weird spot in terms of not being able to really go for a Trick Room on that turn. And that's just because every Dragonite ever now has extreme speed. And with the extreme speed, the Trick Room wouldn't matter. And even as I do get some more Pattaya Berries, it's not really going to matter. Unless for whatever reason, this is like a Choice Banded Dragonite and they can't go for an, uh, a freaking extreme speed. So I just decided to go for another attack here. They do have the extreme speed and that takes care of Executor. So reality, I probably should not have gone for the Terra there. 
but I just felt like maybe the value of getting rid of its multi-scale would have been worth it for like being able to now bring in the little goop, the little jelly, and obviously I can now have the ice spinner that it used against me. I know it's got that coverage, and with the scarf, I can at least outspeed this thing. So the plan is basically go into ditto now, and an ice spinner should kill since it doesn't have its crazy bulk. So I can just go for an ice spinner. I am going to be able to outspeed. The one problem is that Buddy does in fact still have the Terra active. So they're going to go ahead, commit the Terra on the Dragonite, which is quite scary, and allows them to go for the Terra normal. Obviously just going to boost that extreme speed even further. And now as I'm looking at it, hold on, an extreme speed actually probably is not great for me. It's, it's exactly what they're going to go for. This Buddy is running at extreme speeds, and a critical hit does knock out my fake-ass Dragonite. So we are finding ourselves now in quite the situation where this thing is a damn problem and Dragonite is one derpy beast. However, I feel like I can make some stuff happen. I decide to go into the Torkoal. As Shellfire comes in, I can get up the sun first of all. But also, I, I know this thing's moveset. I also realize I could probably take an attack here. And you know what would be real nice? A nice little Lava Plume Clutch Burn. They do go for the Earthquake here. Um, and I actually do barely live. I hang on with 6 HP, which is amazing. Allows me to fire off a Lava Plume, but I do not get the burn. So that is bad, and this situation has gone basically worse. Dragonite is a real damn problem because an Extreme Speed obviously finishes me off. And while I do have this thing at like half, I'm now thinking at least it doesn't have any setup. Without any attack boost, potentially the freaking Narwhal can live in attack here. I'm gonna go into the sharp fella and basically hope that I can live in extreme speed here. So I had some stuff going with my dragon earlier. He's got some stuff going with his dragon now, but I do have faith in the Samurai. They do go for that extreme speed with that Terra boost. It is quite scary. However, we are able to live with 25 HP, which is extremely clutch. I can then go ahead and toss a sword at his face and somehow my sword is sharp enough to break diamonds. Does take care of the Dragonite, which is amazing. And that is a big, a big problem out of the way. And while I didn't have to spend a whole lot to get rid of it, at least now we've got ourselves in a spot to bring this match back. Now, they can go into one of their two mons left. They decide to go into the Garganacle, who is annoyingly still at full HP. And while I can't go for the Stab Aqua Cutter because the sun is up, I'm kind of forced to go for the Sacred Sword, which does at least hit it for super effective damage. And as they finish me off, you know, with the Body Press, I'm kind of fine with that because that means that uh, it didn't set up at all, which is good, because the amount of times that Garganacle has annoyed the hell out of me by going for setup and iron defense and things like that, thing is damn ridiculous. And at this point, I'm like, okay, you know who is a late game killer? The freaking Katana. I go into Leveny, and with the amount of chip I have on the fella, I'm like, I could probably go ahead and freely set up a Swords Dance and then get a kill with a Leaf Blade next, which should be amazing. I know this thing can't really knock me out. That's at least... The benefit of going up versus Gargs is that you can kind of freely set up on them, and there's just some more salt being thrown around. It, it, that's how you feel when you're battling against Garganacle, is just extra salty. And well, that's mostly fine because obviously it's not going to do a whole lot of damage. I can then now outspeed, and at plus two, a Leaf Blade is going to be able to take care of it, and they also can no longer go for any Terras. So we slice him up, dice him up. He's already diced, but that is going to finish off the big old wall. And now Leveny is in a nice little position here, except Salty, that uh, I am going to be faster under the sun. And it comes down to their final Mon, which is going to go ahead and be the freaking Clod Sire. So Clod Sire and Garganacle wall combo is annoying, but also I'm like, okay, I have the coverage with Triple Axel. All I got to do is hit this with the Swords Dance as long as it's not unaware it kills, but... I fucking mi I missed. I literally, I missed Triple Axels way too often for that to be a 90% accurate move. And even more annoyingly, they actually go for the stockpile, which now gives this thing a defense boost to put it at a point where this thing should be able to now live a freaking attack. And while the Salt Cure isn't doing whole, a whole lot, I can at least hope to freaking land another Triple Axel here. I do finally connect. And since Buddy has gorged himself with a stockpile, it is going to be barely bulky enough to hang on, which uh, is scary, but it actually now goes for the recover, which this thing is just once again being incredibly annoying. The good news is, after recover, it should be in range to die to another triple axel. The problem then becomes, if I miss, I'm kind of in bad trouble. But it's like, hey, I've already used up my miss for the day. Just go ahead and go ahead and let me have this, please. If there is an Arceus out there, 
Bless me. And we do actually connect on the last triple axle, which is amazing. It is going to be enough to take care of the Claude Sire, and that is going to do it for the game. So it was quite the interesting match, and honestly, some misplays here and there, but regardless, still a really good, uh, really good game. This team is fun to mess around with. Sun is always a good time, as long as you got your sunscreen on. And uh, beware of the tall-ass, long-neck executors. They will get you.